I think it's a big deal. I, I, I would think so. I mean, it's, there's, there's something to be said about that kind of comfort blanket. There's something to be said about that guy that you have the relationship with that's calling the plays. Not sure exactly how they do it up there, but um, it, it would to me it would be a big deal not to have um, Coach Randy on, on game day in my ear. Everybody, I'm Missy Matthews. Welcome to the Matchup Show presented by Power Home Solar. We are talking Wild Card Weekend. The Browns coming to Heinz Field for a Sunday night football matchup. Let's introduce you to our panel today. Mike Pursuta of the DVE Morning Show. And then we also have former Steelers quarterback Charlie Batch. Lots of questions uh, for him today as well. And Matt Williamson from Steelers Nation Radio and DVE also kind enough to join us today. And guys, it is exciting. The playoffs are here. I can tell you. The turf guys are starting to paint the field. The AFC logo pursuit is going on. I know that probably makes you super excited uh, to know that super it is. Excited. <laughs> I'm glad it's not the NFC logo. Otherwise, they'd have to redo it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get on it and make sure it's the right one. It is. I saw I saw it. So anyways, guys, a big matchup. Uh, the 15th time in NFL history. Two teams met in the last week of the regular season, meeting again in the first round of the playoffs. So, Pursuit, I'll start with you. Since these two teams just played, this is also number three. How do their game plans change or not change this weekend? I don't think they change a whole lot. I think they just try to do it do what they did better and with better people. I actually thought the Browns kind of went away from Nick Chubb a little early last Sunday in Cleveland. Maybe they thought they had the game pretty much wrapped up. Uh, I'm not sure what their thinking was, but I would think if he was having the kind of success that he had in the first half last Sunday, you'd see a whole lot more of them in the second half. And I know the Steelers went down the field a little bit more often, but they're going to have to be judicious with that stuff because it's still going to be about protection and not letting Miles Garrett wreck the game. So I think uh, you, you see both teams doing what they do. They probably, you know, Browns probably hope to get Denzel Ward back. Steelers are counting on getting Cam Hayward and TJ Watt and some other guys back. We'll, we'll see who can do what they do better. Charlie, we have a fan question for you. At the top of the show, we heard from Ben Roethlisberger talking about if Randy Feekner wasn't the guy in his ear helping call plays. Uh, no Kevin Stefanski, so Rose wants to know, do you think that will lead to a more simplified or a more varied offensive game plan for the Browns? Well, I think it could be a little bit more advanced because you never know right now and uh, with Alex Van Pelt taking over the reins. Is, will he now be a little bit more aggressive in his play calling, especially down the field throws? So that's something that you have to pay attention to. If you're the Steelers coaches, now you have to go back and kind of look at some of those games that he actually called plays in, which was years ago, that now you have to look back and say, okay, how aggressive was he with his play calling? So the coaches have a little bit of a challenge ahead of him as well. Okay, Matt, the Steelers received some good news today. They activated Eric Ebron and Cassius Marsh from the COVID-19 list. Joe Hayden is still on there. So how is not having Joe Hayden on Sunday going to affect the Steelers secondary? Yeah, I'm sure it's breaking his heart not to play in this one against the Browns, the former team, all that. He's a, obviously a leader of a high-quality corner man or zone. But I got to say, I'm pretty darn impressed with Sutton. And I think he's a very strong fill-in. And you don't lose anything from the slot perspective because of Hilton. I mean, we're not going to see any of Lane, I'm sure, this week. But I think they're more than capable of handling it. Plus, they rushed the passer so well. And they rushed the passer so well last week, even without their top guys. So uh, it's a pretty corner-friendly environment. All right, speaking of that pass rush and the Steelers defense, let's look at the Steelers defensive rankings compared to the Browns offensive rankings. Rankings, excuse me, of course, as you had mentioned, Pursuta. TJ Watt was on his couch week 17, so was Cam Hayward. They were texting, and uh, Pursuta, what do you think they were saying as they were watching uh, that Browns offense? Uh, I, uh, what I hope they were saying, and I, I doubt they were saying this, but I, I hope they were saying, we have to do a much better job against Nick Chubb, and we cannot, under any circumstance, let break, Baker Mayfield break contain, get outside the pocket, and either run or throw. I imagine they were just busting each other's chops and and maybe full. Maybe they were seriously analyzing that. I don't know, but I, I think uh, Charlie, you'd know better than I would. But when you're on a team, you get plenty of time for film study, right? If you're just watching a game, you're probably just watching a game, but. Uh, you know, always job one is stop the run. But with Cleveland, it's so much more critical because if you let them run, then you set up the play action, then you set up the play action bootleg. And that's how you end up with Baker Mayfield and victory formation at the end of the game. Charlie, what do you think? And what did Baker and company show you last Sunday? 
Well, I, I thought Pitt Baker was patient um, throughout the course of the game. Of course, they're just trying to get that running game going, but it's a little hard to tell because we didn't have some of our guys on that defensive side of the ball. But now when you look back, the nature of their offense, they've always been running the ball. When you have two running backs that score 11 touchdowns, I mean, you're committed to running the football there. And that's where Baker's success has come off of. So the Steelers have to be aggressive, understanding that they have to stay within their lanes as they attempt to rush the quarterback, but they have to be disciplined only because of Baker's mobility. Vince Williams was back last week, Matt, but also Robert Spillane's at practice. We don't know if he will be good to go for game action on Sunday. How does the Steelers defense look as they are heading into the final few days of practice here? I think they look good. You know, we talked about Hayden and that's a slight concern, but I got to think Hayward and Watt and some of these guys are going to be a lot fresher. Uh, you mentioned the second level and you throw Williamson into that mix now. Now they have a few more options uh, depending on down and distance situations on those true linebackers. And it's going to be a big game for them. I mean, kind of these two mentioned, they throw a lot at you. It's a very diverse run game and it's really important. There's a lot of design quarterback mo movement and those type of things. Um, a lot of play action, you know, really trying to get those linebackers to bite and then throwing over their heads. So having a, an experienced guy like Vince Williams in there and, you know, some of the, the run and hit ability of Spillane, I think, is key. I mean, they're healthier there than they've been. That's for sure. OK, guys, much more to discuss about Wild Card Weekend. We will do that when we return here on the Matchup Show. Everybody, welcome back to the Matchup Show presented by Power Home Solar. Uh, some news to report in terms of who is allowed to be inside Heinz Field for the game on Sunday. The Steelers releasing the statement from Director of Communications Burt Loughton saying we are disappointed we will not be able to host our season ticket holders and other fans at Heinz Field on Sunday night against the Cleveland Browns in our AFC Wild Card game. The state is only permitting 2,500 total people in the building, so that includes players, coaches, and staff. It will also limit fans in the seating bowl to just family and friends of players and of the team. All right, Pursuta, we've talked to Dave DeCastro and a number of guys about the atmosphere and maybe the lack of a real, real home field advantage this year. Uh, what do you make of it just being a small number once again and what that could potentially mean for the atmosphere here on Sunday? You know, other than the uh, much discussed uh, communication issue, you know, the defense can hear what the offense is saying and vice versa. That'll be the same. But I don't think anybody's going to need the crowd to get juiced up. I know DeCastro was really forthcoming um, between the Ravens game and the game against the Washington football team. That uh, Ravens game was the first one where they didn't have any fans at all. And he was he was really down about it. And I think he was feeling pretty fried right about then. It had been a long process since uh, August the 17th when the pads came on. But, uh, boy, even David DeCastro was upbeat the other day. If you can't get excited for this, you can't get excited. You're in the wrong place. Mike Tomlin's been banging the urgency drum. All the players, you know, Juju says the young players can't take it for granted because he's only been to the playoffs once. Ben says the old players can't take it for granted because <laughs> you may never get back. Uh, they got to show up with their A game uh, emotionally, I would think. Yeah, I feel like everybody has been very upbeat over Zoom, which I think says a lot this week, which is a good sign. And Charlie, another fan question for you today, because there was a lot of quarterback questions and you are a quarterback expert. This one is from Heather. She says, do you think we'll see Josh Dobbs active and taking snaps in this game? I do think he'll be active this week as it relates to the snaps in the game. I think that all depends on how the game is unfolding. But I think, do think they have a plan in order. Cleveland is going to have to now prepare for that particular package because the Steelers had success that way. So it's a good issue to have, but I think that, that question will reveal itself as the game goes on. All right, Matt, what are your thoughts on that based off of what Dobbs showed us on Sunday in Cleveland? Yeah, there's a couple things to think about there in that, as Charlie mentioned, I think it's key that you put it on tape. So they're going to spend some time this week and they don't have a lot of practice time to begin with. Um, you know, have to at least uh, you know, consider that, that the Steelers are going to throw that at you. The Steelers have been the worst team in the NFL over the last two year stretch at third and fourth and ones. So if I were to use them, that would be the situation that I do. However, I don't know how you get them active on game day. I mean, you're not going to Rudolph has to get a helmet in case Ben goes down. And, you know, I would rather have a guy like Raider maybe in the game as opposed to Dobbs. I mean, when in doubt, 
I want to snap the ball to Ben, not Dobbs. And Raider was somebody Coach Tomlin gave props to for his special teams play in Cleveland on Sunday. Okay, let's talk X factors. Pursuta, who's your X factor in this game? Eric Ebron, and uh, nice to hear that he came off the COVID-19 list today. I'll tell you, I still have not seen the offense look any better for an extended stretch than it did when they went to the four wide receivers and Eric Ebron in the second half of the Baltimore game. They dialed that up against Dallas when they were trailing. Uh, they did it a little bit in Jacksonville. They've kind of gotten away from that. I know you can't really run the ball in that uh, personnel group unless it's a jet sweep, but I think they they come up with so many great matchups with that group of five, and Ebron is critical to that. I know he started dropping passes the second half of the season, but I think he's a guy they need to have on the field and making his plays when they come to him because I think even when the plays don't come to him, he's going to influence the play and impact the play. Okay, thank you for not picking Ben. I should have stated my only rule. You can't <laughs> pick Ben. So, Charlie, no Ben. Uh, Pursuit already picked Ebron. Who are you going with? Well, I guess the show's over. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm, gonna go, uh, I'm going against the norm here, and, and I'm going to go Jordan Berry. And the reason why I say that is because in the second half of this year, the Steelers' offense have taken them a while to get going, and they really struggled in that first quarter. So in that in that pace right there, Jordan Berry is going to have to now punt the football directionally to make sure he's able to pin Cleveland down just in case this offense is off to another slow start. And when they're ready to go, at least they're starting out with decent field position. So Jordan Berry is my key this week. Okay, Matt. Well, Pursuit of stole mine. I'm always going third in these, and somebody grabs my X Factor. And I just to expand on Ebron, I really think the middle of the field of that Browns defense, linebackers, safeties, is very soft. I think that's a, a spot to attack without question. So I'm going to call a quick audible, though. But with Filer likely coming back at left guard, I think their six offensive line sets that they've had success with in former years now can be really be you know a, a, a real factor for them and be physical at the point of attack i'd like to see some of that without gerald hawkins as the sixth offensive lineman okay guys we will get your keys to the game we're going to take a quick break here we will be right back Everybody, welcome back to the matchup show presented by Power Home Solar. It is time now for our keys to the game presented by your neighborhood Ford store. All right, ask and you shall receive. Matt, you get to go first this time. So Pursuta and Charlie will have to wait. Matt, give us your key to a win on Sunday. My concern, first of all, the Browns are in a bad spot. I mean, the Steelers have been big brother. The Browns haven't won here forever. They have COVID issues, no head coach, all sorts of things working against the Browns. But my worry from a Steeler perspective is starting slow. Like if you look at Ben's first quarter numbers this year, they're really low. I mean, and the Steelers offense has not come out of the gates fast, really from start to finish all year long. If the Browns can, you know, stick with their run game and not have to play left-handed and have a lead early on, I think the Steelers could be in a little bit of trouble. That's my worry. Okay, Charlie, give us your key. My key is getting that running game going. Quite frankly, they have nowhere to go but up. They're 32nd in the league in rushing. At this point, Ben has to be able to have to take some of that pressure taken off of him. So he has to be able to turn around and hand that football off to James Conner, Benny Snell, Anthony McFarlane, whoever is up in this particular game, just to control that time of possession right now. So they have to get it going. Hopefully it's this week. Okay, Pursuit, I give us your key. Uh, don't let Miles Garrett wreck the game. You know, he, has, he hasn't been the same player in the last seven games that he was in the first seven. He had a bout with COVID-19 uh, in that final seven games. The Browns no longer have uh, Olivier Vernon, his running mate, the other edge pass rusher. Uh, it's a really unremarkable linebacker crew, as Matt mentioned. The defensive backs are pretty average. Other than Denzel Ward, who, as we speak, I don't know if he's playing or not, but uh, if you don't let Miles Garrett wreck the game, sack, force, fumble, that kind of stuff, you ought to be able to move the ball on these guys, whether it takes you a little time to warm up or not. Uh, you know, identifying number 95, he moved around a lot last Sunday. I don't know if that was by design or uh, if he was, you know, looking for a matchup he liked and just couldn't find one. Uh, but identify him, take him out of the equation as best you can. 
the rest of it ought to pretty much fall into place. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining me here on the matchup show. Steelers and Browns Sunday night football at Heinz Field for Wild Card Weekend, the last game of the weekend on the docket. Thanks for joining me. Have a great night, everybody. We hope to see you next week. What's up, Steelers Nation? It's TJ Watt. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers official YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on everything going on in the Steel City. Thank you for being the best fans in football. Here we go.